Hello YouTube, welcome back to Nutkin Farm. I've been lucky enough to have a return visit today from Maddie Kelby, who you saw in the Macadamia show. There's Maddie again. Uh, Maddie was keen to come around and see my baby macadamia trees because he has several thousand of them himself. And I thought being a bit of an expert on babies, I should get his views on what I might be doing wrong or right with, with them. Um, Matt, this is block one. It's full of, as we discussed, it's full of very different trees, not all of which we know, but it's healthy. The pH is right. Um, I planted these two four sixes in, I think, uh, early 2020, autumn 2020, okay. after so many of them died in the drought. So they're about 18 months old. Yeah, I suppose so. And they were they were reasonably well advanced at the nursery when. I got them, so not all of this is is me, yeah. but this is a 246, for example, which, you know, they're known for being fairly robust and a spreading tree. Um, is this growing how you'd expect it to grow? Is it? I mean, it looks healthy enough, but uh, you definitely got a couple of leaders in there. Maybe it might be wise to thin them out and get it back to a central leader and, and start getting the Christmas tree shape back into it. Right, and is this the is this the age when you do that, or you just or do you let it go for a bit and then see what's trying to be the leader? I think eighteen months. Anything under eighteen months is the way to go. If right, you leave it longer. You're just wasting time on wood. You're going to cut back, and then it's going to take longer to start fruiting, and All right. and it just sets you back. So I, I personally think if you now Hawaiian variety takes three years of cut wood to flower, yeah, then eighteen months, three years. That's what four and a half. Four and a half years. Four and a half years, and and these two four sixes don't fruit too early. I think they can give you some nut after about six years, but um, they're not they're not overly slow. But yeah, I mean, I I get bewildered because I look at this and it looks to me like it's already spreading. Mm -hmm. So what's the leader? What do you call a leader in this sort of a big one? Well, really, <laughs> because one. because this has got this bunch at the top here. Pick the best structure. It, it looks like it looks like the leader, yeah. and there's one off to the side here, which oh, might be competing with it a little bit. And then there's this one on a thinner stalk. Yeah. So is the natural leader the one with the thickest stalk? No, no, not not necessarily. Like what I would do was would be to pick the best structure between your knee and hip height is where you want them to start branching. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't necessarily need to be the biggest one. All right. So just you, you find one that's the best structure and then work around it. Well, I, I'm just guessing here, but I mean, this is my guess. This one in the middle, is that? I mean, good because it's the, it seems to be the thickest and the most upright. Well, what what do you reckon? Yeah. yeah, that looks all right for this one. Um, and but you've got a branch there that's competing as well. A branch off it. Yeah. So. So what's the aim of pruning then to get rid of that branch? Yeah. So pick one. Yep. So you see these two are competing. Yep. They're both about the same size. So they are, yeah. Take the other ones out, cut this right back, um, and then let it reshoot, and then thin this out to to get a leader and a couple of smaller branches. So it's a bit like a Christmas tree. Right. And the aim then is that one continues growing up, and the others might yeah. sprout again. Yeah, but, they, they will. Yeah. But they but but they won't take over it, the leader at that point. Set them back. Put them in their place if you like. Right. Do they ever stop trying to compete to be leader? Or do they stop it at that point? Ooh. Well, you saw the G varieties at my place? Yeah. Yeah, they're shocking for it. Right, they'll keep coming back and trying to compete. Yeah, you just got to keep on doing them. 246 probably behaves because it's been such a favourite for so many years. You'd, you'd, think, uh, you'd think that might be it. I mean, these are all the same yep. sort of vintage. Interesting, they... they you know, they're, they're different different rates of growth, some of them. Okay. It, you seem to get that on your farm as well. In what seems to be identical soil, you know, pretty much the same lighting conditions, you're going to get different results. You will, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I've had trees I've put in, in the ground before and they haven't done anything for two years and then all of a sudden they just start to grow. Yeah. Yeah, this, this little 246 up here, up the hill here, is... Uh, uh, the veteran, one of the only ones that survived my initial planting in spring 2019, and it's got to be my smallest 246. 
I got a visit from some neighbouring chooks. Well, it's got some plush on it, so... Yeah. Oh, I haven't written it off. I mean, here's... OK, here's the graft. It's still still there. So we know this is 246 growth on the top. Um, You've got two coming out of the graft, so... Yeah. Cutting back to one and... Perhaps, yeah, and then... Get a bit of size into it and come back in six months and... And see, see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the 246s in general, I mean, that's, a, that's another one straight ahead of us there but um, down here you can see some differences in varieties uh, these I've got four of these 788s which is the one they they look happy they are real happy this is definitely the sort of size you'd want to start doing something with the pruning really yeah, yeah. okay really better but it's got massive foliage big upright growth it's apparently a fairly upright tree mm. you can see that it's like it's a bit like your a38s almost yeah um similar sort of structure they just seem to want to grow up and the, the trunk's getting thicker um by itself pretty much it's got the same feeding as all my other babies and it's it's just carrying on there seem to be again multiple, multiple competitors for a leader but all about the same thickness mostly and yeah keep trying to compete with each other and go up right so a pruning cut here, pretend I want this to be the leader. Yeah. I cut these, what, about there or something? or, or? Oh, Probably lo like the ones that are competing with the up, with the, the main one, cut them back a bit further. Okay. Maybe right back here. And they'll right. reshoot. Yep. And then anything growing upwards or inwards, cut that out and then try and get it to push out. Like a rose bush, sort of, uh, like, a, like a vase or sort of thing. Or this one sort of goes up. Yeah. And then here again, you've got two competing there, or three. Yeah. So... It's a vigorous tree. Maybe take the centre one out and then cut that that one back by a third. Yeah. Let that go. And then there's your leader. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so, I mean, remarkable. Remarkable tree, that. I mean, of course, we don't really have much in its fruiting or flowering performance yet, but certainly um, certainly seems promising. And it's sort of outgrowing these two four sixes that we've got over here. We've got a couple of... Uh, couple of other varieties that replaced some dead ones that um, Tim Hills gave me. Okay. That's another 788. Yeah, wow, it's really happy. Yeah, April 20 that was planted. Last year? Yeah. Okay, so it's uh, so, um, uh, yeah, nearly 18 months old. Yep. Yeah, yeah you're on track. It's over my, it's over my head, so... So, um, did you plant that with a shovel or... Yep, or I planted like every single one of these with a pincer shovel. And uh, maximum effort, as um, Deadpool would say. He, uh, but but you know, it's not bad. It doesn't do your back in because you you're just sort of pushing down. Um, I tried a mechanical, uh, a battery powered auger. That's an eight three five, I think. Oh no, no, that's another seven eight eight as well. Battery powered tools. So. They're dreadful. Well, that one was dreadful. Yeah. They haven't hit their uh, peak yet. Yeah. There's the last of my seven eight eights there. So yeah, very distinctive sort of variety. Um, and we get on here to the 835s, which are descended from the 246. So, again, it's sort of, they grow about the same, very little between them. I can't see, I really have trouble finding leaders, but you, you just say pick one. Pick one. Yeah, maybe that one. Cut these back, cut the rest out, and then top him. It'll start the branch here. Yep. And then you might have to pick another one again in six months' time. And right. Get him to start working its way up. I'll, I'll take you to some sort of more young trees, which certainly aren't candidates for pruning yet. Um, we go through here. That's an A4. I, you reckon? I, I would think it's an A4 or an A something. Yeah, it's got the right sort of racemes. Right leaf. Definitely the right serrated leaf. Colour. Yeah, you can tell them the colour. Wow, yeah, that's huge. look at the size of that racing. It's big. It yeah, is. but I tell you what, I've looked at a few farms on this trip, and all the farms are in massive flower. Uh, we're all about to get our first spray because lace bug is in early. Like I mean, it's not out of season flowering at all. This is a full on early flowering, and possibly leading to an early season. The other thing that might suggest it's a four is some stick tights. Um, yeah. and there are a few, uh, my agronomist says this fella here 
is probably Beaumont. Okay. It's still got a whole stack of crop on it um, and a whole stack of stick tights, and yet there's the flowering. Yep. Is a complete crossover between one season and the next, and the trees cl seem completely confused. So yeah, that, that Beaumont variety is supposed to come from where we are at Casino. Yes. The was saying. Yep, and they're still doing trials, according to Tim, on Beaumont being a potentially better rootstock than H2. Yeah, I've got one at home and yeah. flowered in its first year. It's just gone in the ground. It's been sitting in a pot for two years. And yeah. I just got around to planting it. But, um, they grow them as crop in South Africa. They do. Yeah, big, big nuts, apparently. Yeah. And um, if they can get a decent crop off them, they get a fair bit of kernel. But, um, yeah, there's certainly no problems with cross-pollination in this block because there's just so many varieties in the one thing. And you, you get and then, good nut set out of this? Yeah, there's yep. always been good nut set um, out of the flower here. Um, this didn't really have the year off. This this actually cropped this year, and there's a couple that, that, that almost looks like an H2 over there. But oh, I, that is a H2. Well, it's big round leaves. Well, it, that's what looks like an H2 to it's me. Just like the ones at Tim Hill's place. But, but why have the nuts not fallen? Are they meant to fall late? Is not it a late sure. dropper? Not sure. Because look at all these nuts. Yeah. I've had an offer of some tree shaking, but uh, I wasn't going to bring them to this block. But um, wow. I reckon this tree needs a good shake. It's got a nice structure to it. Is it does. It does. It, it's an upright tree. Um. Yeah, but the leaf the leaf just looks like H2 to me. Plenty of them around the noon. And there's, I, look, I don't know what this is, but whatever it is, it thinks it's a wattle tree or something. It's just it's just got flower all over the bloody okay. place. And um, your guess is as good as mine, but yeah. there, it's a heavy flower. It's possibly a 246. Well, it looks like a H2 when you look at this. But, but, then, but then there's... Have a look at that. Then, then you've got these massive long leaves... That suggests covered. almost that it's a rough nut or bush nut or something. Covered in spines, yeah. So. Who knows? <laughs> schizophrenic. Anyway, I keep asking my agronomist the question and he keeps not being able to give me the answer. I do know what I've planted. This is an 835, um, which is a di direct descendant of the 246. And it tell, you can, sh you can yeah. see it. Looks like an 849. Yeah. But it's an 835. They're the earliest cropping, and uh, not earliest cropping in terms of years, but the earliest in season to crop. These these guys finish their drop by about March or April, uh, apparently. But um, but coming on here, these are some of the trees that um, Tim sold me. So I got all the same ones you did with the addition of R. Okay. <clears throat> and in fact, here's an R right now. Of of all of them, the R seems to be the most vigorous. Okay. And and I can compare with a G in a minute, but um, too early to prune. Let's take that out. Take it back to one. Pick either one. They're both about the same, same right. sort of structure. And they're you can tell they're both coming out of the graft, can't we? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're starting to branch between knee and hip height. Just pick one. So you'd prune that now? Yeah, you could. Right. Um, once it's sort of, how long has it been in the ground? Oh, only since autumn this year. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so it's autumn this year, right. basically. Well, that's nearly six months, so. Yeah. Once it's established, yeah. I think, I think Tim gave them to me in March. Tim, if you remember, post a comment in the comments section. Uh, he watches some of these. I don't know if he watches all of them. But I can give you an example of, I think these are G's over here, which they haven't got shorter since I planted them, but they're not really taking off. And... I'm just wondering if that happened to you, because... Uh, yeah, they were a bit slow to get started, like the MCT1 and... Right, so, so this is a G. 203, okay. Yeah, little baby. It, it hasn't, basically hasn't grown since I planted it. Yeah, just it's, it's about as tall as your boot, just to, well... I've got big boots. <laughs> You've got big boots, so that's sort of, uh, so cheating a bit. But um, yeah, so I, I don't know why G G is really out of they were they were all about the same size when I bought them, yeah, but I'd say G is the least vigorous in my experience. I remember mine were only that big after twelve months, and right, I went around and put twenty kilos of cow manure and yeah, um, a cup full of fertilizer, and then we got two inches of rain the next night, and before you knew it, they were way up. Yeah, so so I shouldn't worry really. 
yeah. I'm not panicking. I mean, look, I've got, I fertilize. I'm still fertilizing with Osmocote like they do in the nursery. Bit of a, you know. Take those off. Oh yeah, there's something below the graph there. Something that's a constant, constant bit of work. So I, I don't think I'm under feeding them as such. No. But um, the ones that, the other ones that seem fairly happy. Pea. Is pea. Yeah, you can tell pea a mile off, can't you? Yeah. Huge leaves. Yeah. Dirty big vulgar tree. Uh, this one, this one though, Tim sold to me in a great big pot, mm -hmm. in a great big, uh, oh, it was a two foot wide pot because it was overgrown. It was getting root bound and so he put it in a bigger pot. So there's a bit of cheating involved, but happy tree. Yeah, very happy. Yeah, quite. It's a bit too. slow for me. So they, they turn into a bit slow. Yeah. I, I want, look, I thought about what you said when you told me that, but it does, it isn't a big tree at no, full growth. it's not. So perhaps it's in proportion to its final size, it's not going out of, it's not really being overly weak. No. I don't know. And after two and a half years, with a couple of just starting to flower. Yeah. So my agronomist said, I like this pea, because I, I prompted him to look him up because he's, he's a bit cynical about the new varieties. And he said, I like this pea. And I said, what do you like it? I said, you know, there's every reason to hate it. It's a cross between the A16 and the 814. And he just shivered and he said, yes, I know, but it just seems like a good shape tree. Mm -hmm. And um, they like tree shapes, agronomists, or at least my one does. They, they sort of pay a lot of attention to that. They like spreading trees. They don't really like upright ones. Okay. And uh, and so, yeah, he's always, you know, if I've had a chance to pick up spare trees from a nurseryman, I know I got offered some very, very large three, four, fours, and he said, look, just don't touch them. No. And yeah. um, get... Well, they're getting pulled out left, right and centre everywhere. Yeah. Well, and then he said, but but then the same nurseryman said, oh, I could have some two, four, sixes I'll let you have. And, and my grandma's face lit up and he said, that's what you want. Mm -hmm. Just get the two, four, sixes. They're as old as the hills, but they work. They crop like crazy. They flower like crazy. And um, he's got a scenario at the moment where um, someone's got a field full of eight, uh, eight, four, twos that just aren't setting nut, but there's no other trees around them. And yeah. um, he's, I think, going to say, put some two, four, sixes in there to cross pollinate because they flower. Not self-compatible. Yeah. Well, the eight, four, twos apparently have some self-compatibility. And in fact, the 660 and the 741 can self-pollinate a bit. You know, coincidentally, they're the trees with the smallest nuts. And um, maybe there's something in that. that You can get bigger nuts from cross-pollinating than you can from um, from just expecting to pollinate itself. But yeah, so there's, you know, basically all the varieties I've got. Um, I haven't gone through every single one of them. There's a couple of J's, um, only a couple of them. But um, now you're you're keen on the Jays. I'm going to be watching mine closely. Yeah, no flowers on them this year yet. So right. Uh, maybe another year or two. So just your MCT ones yeah. and your what else is flowering? The two hundred threes. Yeah. Right. Uh, so there's probably 150 trees flowering this year. We planted 50 MCT ones two years ago, and there's 90 percent of them will be flowering. Flowering. Yeah. Not huge amount of flowers, but um, it's promising. To start. Yeah. Fortunately, I have to go through and prune them all back. Yeah. I've left it a bit late, but... This fella here is an 842. Did you have any 842s on your... No. Right. It's got... I don't know why it's leaf... Maybe it just has naturally a lighter green leaf. Or is that a, is that a weakness? Is that a... Maybe it's lacking a bit of nitrogen. Yeah. Or there's another nutrient imbalance somewhere. S somewhere there. But just this patch of soil might be a bit higher in something or a bit low in something it, else? It might be, yeah. Look, I gave it a handful of osmocote. If it was short in nitrogen, it won't be for long, but yeah. The salt, the salt burn? Y yeah. Or sunburn? Could, could even be sunburn, but I've, I've given it a bit of extra moisture. It's like we had 28 degrees yesterday and I was running around the place with buckets. But, it's a uh, bit of a lean too. It is a bit of a lean, yeah. I might, I might see if I can get that. Get yourself a stake and pull him back this pull, way. Pull it back up a bit. There's a few of them that lean over a bit. There's some some different views on staking, though. Some say it, it weakens the tree a bit if you stake it, and if it if you if you can leave it to its own devices, they can um, they can grow stronger. Well, if, if I, I'm not, when, I don't know if I believe it. Yeah. If and when I have problems at home, because it gets quite windy where we are. Yep. If we do get a tree with a bit of a lean on it, or if it's blowing around the wind, then I will stake it. With and a star then, picket or something? or 
the bigger ones use a star picket. The, the right. smaller ones we use an inch by inch tomato stake. Okay. And just they're just them. hardwood stakes, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Pull them back, prune them back, um, and they should reset. Okay. Yeah, because I've got a, a couple that I think they're leaning towards the sunlight here, two in a row. Okay. And I can't get them to stand up. The other problem too is... So there's, there's two two like this, this one here. These are both 835s. When you pull the bag off the uh, off the root zone... Yeah, um, that can destabilise it a bit. If, yeah. if half the potting mix falls off, then you've got a bad root system to start with. Yeah. So staking... Kind of helps anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, it's a, it's vigorous enough. It's a happy tree up to a point. It's just either, either it's I, looking for the sun or it's just gone on a lean. I don't know what the story is. Been going around in the wind. And that that second one up there, same thing. But they're the only two in my block I'm really unhappy with. It's, it's top heavy. This is also another reason, you know. Yeah. Don't pick the biggest leader. Pick the one with the best structure between your knee and hip height. Yes. So you don't end up with something top heavy that's going to do this later on. Right. That's good advice, thank you. No problem. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, we might tail off for this block, though, but I've got the MCT ones to show you yet, so we will come back. Yeah, so so we're here walking past block two on our way to the MCT ones now, and these are three, four, fours. And, Matt, as you can see, there's flower. There's a fair bit of flower. I mean, we're looking at the edge of the block, of course, which is the best scenario. Um but they're planted on the contour, these rows. So there's a bit of a curve. Yeah, what a headache laying that out would have been. It would have been a headache laying it out and they didn't, the, the, the rows are narrower here. Yeah. Oh, sorry, they're wider here. And then they narrow as they go in, in an attempt to follow the contour around the hill. So yeah. they actually become narrower. Very hard to get that right. Yeah, and, and when you're mowing, you sort of think you're mowing a certain strip, but then some, sometimes you've got to do extra strips in order to cover it. So that, that red and white flag there is basically, this one's earmarked for row removal, along with the one next to it here. Um, Look, I mean, it, it, you know, it makes me cry. I mean, look at that flower. I mean, if all those trees get demolished, I will be losing some nut. There's no doubt about this it. Year, yeah. They had last year off? They had last season, well, this existing season completely off. There was a few nuts at the start and then a second harvest, which cost me nearly as much to harvest as it gave me in nuts. And um, so, yeah, I, I, I thought, well, you know, you could wait till they have an off year to do the job or you could just say well look let's take a long-term view and um and do it so again these these two rows here with the red tape are earmarked for um earmarked for removal and then each of them has a new row of trees planted in the middle of where they were okay. it's hard to tell how much sun there'll be but there'll be sun what are you going to plant in the middle um I like variety R. Yeah. Um, I I want to do one row of that. There's only two rows I'll be planting out of those four that get removed. I plant two, so variety R is one of them. Um, MCT one perhaps for the other. Okay. I'm still a bit wary of MCT one, but but it, it seems to be. See what your ones up on the hill do first. <laughs> well, yeah, there'll be another year on by then. Um, so, yeah, I, I, look, I don't know. One of these rows here, I'd have to count, is my experiment row where I've put down more chemical fertiliser just to see if I've been underfeeding the trees. But uh, we won't know that till next season either. But we'll, uh, we'll move on now. Okay, and on our way, we've just come across an A16, which has a problem. And uh, the problem here is that there's a sucker right at the base of the tree which shouldn't grow there and the original tree is here it's an a16 it's still got nuts some quite big nuts in fact but this sucker here has got nothing for us and maddie's going to show us the tool that he bought for small pruning jobs maddie show still gta 26 gta there you are yeah. and it's battery powered yep. with the battery in the handle that's it a miniature chainsaw now next to my hand Less than a hand length of that. Good 280 bucks spent. 
Two hundred eighty bucks. Two hundred eighty bucks. Right, and that was from Ong Mac, who's the distributor. Yeah. And I think you mentioned this is manual oil. It doesn't have a chain oil reservoir. Yeah, you've got to put it in the bar manually. Right. Um, that's the only real sort of fold I can find with it, other than the chain coming off here and there. But right. Does it need oil now, or is it okay? No, I normally oil it after every battery change. Right. So I could get through small trees and do 40, 50 trees. Okay. Then, is that a power switch or a battery check? It's battery check. So, yeah, it's okay. Useful. So I've got a still battery chainsaw that works on the same sort of thing, except the battery meter's on the battery itself. Yep. So you think that can get through that sucker? Oh, yeah. Really? Okay. Yep. All right, well, let's okay. see. <laughs> Dave, Are you ready? Do you mind just grabbing that? Well, Otherwise, it's going to jam up on me. Like butter. Like that. It's not heavy. That is like butter. Spare battery is 62 bucks. Yep. Doesn't take long to charge, maybe 20 minutes to charge a battery. Certainly don't need ear protection. No. Nah, beautiful. And it's um it's not throwing too much stuff around. It's got a bit of a guard there. Yeah. So that against kickback I I get. I, yeah. I imagine just a bit yeah. Yeah. Lots of miniaturized features of my own still electric chainsaw. But very handy. It could hang off your belt, couldn't it? Or, just, a bit, oh, just about. Yeah. Beautiful tool. Yeah. Well, thanks for that. No problem. Should get you to do all my maintenance. <laughs> so, but we'll head we'll head on up to the more see some more babies. And here we are about to reach the MCT one block, but uh, we came across a little critter who uh, he's not having a sleep. He thinks if he can't see us, we can't see him. But uh, yeah, a little echidna in the grass there, and. Uh, I don't really like being touched, so I think I'll leave him alone. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful little animals. But uh, here's the MCT one block. Matty, um, I've replanted only the ones that died, and there was only like two of them. So I can show you this one nearest to us here is a replant. Mm -hmm. Fairly much brand new. Um, that one was from uh, Rick... Um, Rick Shannon, I think he is, at, um, at Discovery. In fact, all of these are from Discovery at Eureka. These aren't from Tim. Um, looks pretty happy. Yeah. Look, the difference, the difference is I make a bit of a depression. Yeah. I know you don't, you don't no, do that, do you? I'll make a depression with the compost, like a volcano. Okay. But, but the actual the base of the tree is level with the soil? Flush, yeah. Right. I, I thought just because I'm not here to water them, Mm -hmm. It might help drain a bit of extra moisture to the tree. I don't know if it's the right thing to do. I mean, that that's, seems to have taken off happily enough. Cut the top off him. Cut the top off yeah, that? Yeah, get it to branch. Otherwise, it'll just keep going up. Right. So, but, so, oh, that's interesting because in this, we've got a leader. Mm -hmm. And that, I thought that's what we wanted, though. But well, you want it well, to... You want it to branch at, at various stages as it goes up. Oh, I see. Yeah. And, and again, it's now it's up to my tummy or hips or whatever. So is that where you want it to branch, like oh, you said? Even lower than that. I've cut them off at hip height. Yeah. And then they end up, when they grow up a bit, the branches end up up here around your sort of breast. Okay. So. Now, um, these reminded me a bit more of yours. These were planted yeah, the March, March, April 2020. Yeah. So I've got ones that planned the same same time. They're about the same size. About the same so you're size. On, on track. Sort of. Although you know, there's variation. There's these ones are okay, and then you know, you could come up to these ones toward the the top of the hill. Um, here's a bit of my ground cover effort, by the way. It's pinto peanut. Okay. Hasn't taken off. No. It, well, it will, but it's hugging the ground beautifully. So I can mow really closely. And I'll get rid of other species like Soteria, but I won't get rid of Pinto. And it's um, it's it's growing through various bits and pieces, but we've also sown clover around here. Now this one, okay, it's growing a bit, mm -hmm. but there's no real flush. Not yet. And this was planted in April 2020 like the rest of them, yeah. and it's got exactly the same nutrients. So it's sort of hard to pick, isn't it? It's all starting to think about it. Yeah. Maybe. Another month. Maybe it is. Yeah, and funnily enough, the ones that are most exposed at the top of the hill, um, oh, they're not, look, they don't look unhealthy. But um, 
but that's a pure block, block of MCT1 apart from a P at the very end of that row which I thought of, I'd put in for self for pollination purposes. Ooh, pretty straight row. Yeah, this was uh, cheap Bunnings rope, five dollars a roll, and Bunnings tent pegs. Yep. But then, um, yeah, I mean, I thought um, another method apparently is you get a bit of spray paint and you spray on the ground where you're going to dig, and you can spray white spray paint and dig there. That's some apparently another marker you can use, but maybe not if you're using a tractor and an auger. No. And so over here. I think this, I've never shown this on the Nutkin Farm YouTube channel, but this is the spare paddock that could be planted one day. So come and give me your views about this. So Dave came in here with a slasher. It took about two or three goes to get this down. Apparently the whole paddock had been de-rocked, was planted with coffee and and then uh, eventually bulldozed in eventually and it was, it was a blank block of land has been since I got the place but finally now it's slashed we can actually see what we've got so it tails off towards a creek which is the boundary of my property and Peter Fraser's over there this used to be Peter Fraser's land and there's a couple of old trees in the middle of it other than that more or less cleared. So gut feel, which direction would you plant? Would you plant from left, as you see in the view here, over the hill and then right down to where it becomes too steep? Or would you plant along the contour here where you'd get probably longer rows as it goes way over, way over the hill to the other side? What would be your gut feel if you were planting this new? Well, both look good, but um, you know, if you've got your rows running down the side there, you can end up with water going across your rows, which will cause you problems later on. Right, so that's maybe, if you contour. Yeah, well, no, going straight up and down. So maybe up and over the, the hill, like you say, is yeah. the way to go. I, I must admit, I, I may have the strongest hips in Rosebank, but I'm, I get a bit tired of contour mowing where I'm constantly trying to sit upright in a mower that wants to tip over so um and I know agronomists look my certainly Mark Duncan's view was keep the contour of block six which you can see over the hill there and just keep going just keep making more rows but I have to say um you know agronomists aren't the one who mow the mow the orchard and um maybe maybe there's a different view to <laughs> in terms of actual practicality yeah. um Bob Howard, who did the GES mapping, came back to me with another map and he actually suggested a slightly angled planting that would go effectively uh, northeast to, uh, sorry, southeast to northwest using that natural sort of hill there. Because if you map it all out, and it's hard to see unless you're looking down on it from the top, but the way he plotted it actually made a lot of sense. So it's slightly, it's more or less east west, but, but a slight angle to the north as we go over that way and um, that kind of does make sense to me and he reckoned at nine by four you could fit another 600 or so trees in this paddock although I, th I think that could be a bit conservative so d when you started your place at back me did it have grass like this no no not at all so why how, was yours shorter to begin with yeah shorter not as thick right um we didn't end up with this on the ground well this is all cut soteria yeah, this is two passes here okay yeah right. pretty much from where that green is to just here is where i've gone backwards over it essentially backwards over it. going forwards it's just binds up yeah, yeah. you wouldn't want to run any wires or anything over this little no well the... yet all over joint yeah so uh, yeah i i don't know whether you know, long run, or in the planning stage, maybe I just have to mow this and keep it mowed and get it tamed. Hopefully, hopefully weed the soteria out that way. It's a decent mowing job, though. Um, yeah, I think once it's like this, then you can get on with it. Yeah. It's probably going to take a solid day and a half. I mean, yeah. I say that just because it's so, I mean, going forwards, this will pick up. You yeah. Pick up the ball like that. Yeah. Look, a, z Under the tractor, yeah. a, zero, a zero turn mower will have trouble keeping that. I mean, that'll blow up into the engine. 
Yeah, and you'll end Eight. up sitting on fire like, like, like you, you did with yours. Yeah. But burn the air. Yeah. Look, uh, yeah. Well, actually, an accidental <laughs> fire might be a, bon a, a bonus here, but um, well, actually, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, look, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful um, view. And, you know, I mean, if, a couple of people who've come up here said, geez, you'd want to build a house here, but um, there's no, there's no permit for that. But it's a, uh, yeah, it's it's also not a bad block for Maccas. Just up here, the uh, yeah. it was all de-rocked though, so you know I haven't seen a single rock, or I haven't felt a single rock walking over it. Yours was fairly free of rock, Maddie. I think you said, yeah, because it's deep, it's deep soil. You've yeah, got yeah. Hit five with the mower. Right. You got rid of them. Yep, well that sounds like a dream to me. There's uh, these three trees up here and a question of what to do with them. You don't know what, what I don't know. Oh, I do know, I don't... The one in the background? Well, the, no, the, the one furthest in the background is an Antarctic beech, which is a very rare and precious tree. It's a, a, Gondwana, a Gondwana land variety, very... I would leave it there, but I just don't know if this tree in the foreground is a known variety. It doesn't look especially well. It's just got some growth at the tips there. It could be a sick tree, in which case you might put it out of its misery. The one to the right there is a foam bark tree, which you don't want around macadamias because I believe it harbors a pest and it is either fruit spotting bug or, or another one of those pests. It's also a fairly sick tree. So I'd have no conscience clearing that. But uh, certainly my agronomist said, look, you know, having a tree there for habitat, you can get the owls perching there. Mm -hmm. They'll guard the orchard for you from on top. And it's actually a plus for a macadamia orchard. So, so that's, uh, yeah, that's a, um, that's an option. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't, yeah, I look at, it would take a very big push to get that tree over, but um, yeah. Yeah, the one on the one on there is, is fairly dead, but it seems to me like the gradient isn't too too bad. Too bad yeah. Going up Certainly compared to the rest of my farm, it's um, it's it's fairly easy, and um, yeah, it's just a question really of how to prepare this soil. Get some better grass in. Take over the soteria. But is it seeding, or what do you what do you do? I mean, you didn't have that issue, as you said, no, so. I imagine this hay will break down. Like this is only two weeks cut, I think, yeah. or, or in some cases less than a It'll about take, a week. Take a while, take a while to yeah, rot down. Sit, sit, yeah. yeah, and meanwhile, of course, you're going to get new grass growing through where that is. So maybe it's a matter of just grooming it down with the mower until you're ready to plant, and hoping the right grasses grow. Yeah, or use, use a bit of diesel doing that though. Yeah. Would you use a slasher to maintain it? Would you use a slasher or a zero turn mower on this slasher, this amount? I wouldn't use zero turn on this. Really? No, it's too too heavy. But but no, when you got it down, oh, if you, when you got it down, yeah. Is it? Would you regard it as quicker on a zero turn or a slasher? Well, at home, I let the grass grow up, but it's it's not as thick as this sateria stuff. So I just put the slasher over it, right. get it down, well, not as thick as this, and then go on the zero turn and push it up against the trees, but. This is really heavy, this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's thick it's thick straw, effectively. Um, it's sort of, you know, made me think of, well, potentially if you ripped it, you could be burying a lot of decent organic matter into the soil, but then ripping's a big expense, or a rotary yeah. hoe even. Just two plough. Yeah. But... Yeah. So look, it's a question of does it actually benefit the soil in terms of organic matter or, or will it rot down on the surface and turn into that anyway? Yeah. But anyway, that's that's a bit of perspective. You can see the um, the rest of the farm from here. There's the Nutkin farmhouse and um, that's, the, uh, that's the plan for the future. Potentially a thousand babies, but maybe not as organised as your two and a half thousand babies, Matty. <laughs> There's, uh, it's, you're going to be a hard act to follow, I think, but, um.
There it is. Well, thank you for coming to visit no problem. and for offering your advice. I think we'll sign off now and um, and um, get back to get back to some farming work. Thank you all viewers very much for watching. Bye for now.